and welcome to Dialogue Options. My name is Ellen and I'm joined today by Heather and Rob. And we're going to be talking today about side missions that are as good as, if not better than, the main campaign. So, Rob, do you want to kick us off with one of your suggestions? Yeah, the, the, the most obvious one for me, um, mm-hmm. it always, 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 always had it over the main quest, was the Dark Brotherhood line in Oblivion. Yeah. Um, I have never finished the main quest in Oblivion <laughs> and never even attempted to, no matter how many builds I did or how many goes that it did, but I always, always did the Dark Brotherhood. I think that's also one of, one of the reasons, because it gives us cool stuff. But also that the, the, the missions are just incredibly fun and it's a very sort of fulfilling in terms of how many there are and the variety um, of missions there are as well. And I always, always saw that through to the end um, because uh, it's, just, it's just so good. <laughs> there, are mem- mem- there are memorable bits. I think I was, I was trying to rack my brains for particulars, and there are there are some where there's like a couple of missions which are really stand out. One is uh, the murder mystery party when you've got to, you've got to bump everyone off. Yeah. In a, in so the, fun. In a house, a house party, and you get and you get the bonus for doing it um, uh, stealthily, and, and if you don't, if you're not spotted or raise suspicion, and so that mm. was always fun. Uh, there was also. I, I quite like basically so it's like a miniature storyline in itself obviously yeah and the way it sort of wraps itself around um your your role is excellent and so like the dead drop uh mission uh, assassinations are very very good uh, and it turns out you know you've, you've been killing off members of the dark brotherhood all along spoilers um <laughs> but there's just so much variety in it as well and it's just it was always the one that uh that kept me coming back i think it, it's also just I mean, not to bag on about it, but there's, there's just there's, the way it brings ties other bits of the game in as well, because you have to go and murder the guy who's in the cell opposite you right at the very beginning of the game. Mm. That was a, that's a particularly good one. Um, but yeah, it, for me, that was the that's that's the most obvious one. I guess that's what's nice about some side missions is that if you if sometimes the main campaign is quite long or quite ambitious and and lots of different branches sometimes it's nice to just have almost like a mini version of that and just have a little condensed story you can get that done in like half an hour or however long and often they're kind of more playful than they are in the main campaign it's like they've just got this free reign to just be a little bit silly or maybe a little bit uh well dark i guess in some cases yeah and you could totally um you could just have some weird fun with how to, you know, assassinate all these people, and it's got that um, a certain sort of revisiting quality as well. So if you did do a, a few different characters, you could do it a few different times over and over again. You could try and, I don't know, you reverse pickpocket poisoned food onto people, which I've learned you could do. Um, what? So so. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah, apparently. This is like put, was, put pocket, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then they automatically, whatever food you put in their pockets, they eat immediately or something. It seems weird, doesn't it? Then, of course, yeah, of course they... you would. <laughs> if food appeared in your pocket. Oh, I just, just found like... a sandwich in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Better try that's, it that's got to be safe. Yeah. yeah. You have no recollection of making the sandwich. It's just appeared in your pocket. You're like, well, I was Also, I, like, I just, any food you found in your pocket, why would you eat it? Because it, it would be all like covered in your pocket scars and like, <laughs> I don't know it's yeah <laughs> I guess it's just like, uh, like sorry oblivion characters always wear the same outfits so there's no and, there's and no the question same voices. Of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's something that transferred over to the next game as well but I guess there's no doubt of like when did I last wear these trousers it's got, they've got a biscuit in them it's just like <laughs> they only ever wear this one outfit so <laughs> who knows how long they've had a pocket sandwich for so you may as well try it. Is, is what I, is what I'm saying. I'm I'm all for <laughs> I'm all for Apparently trying you, your pocket food. I think yeah. there's some games where there's like a single standout mission, and then there's some games that you just kind of know for having great side missions as a whole. It's just like tied to the game. And like I think Oblivion and Skyrim are both games where I just look back at those and I think more about the side missions than I do the main. But there's some bits of of the main campaigns that are just kind of lost. My, my memory has just not I just can't recall bits whereas I can tell you like every stop on the um in the Skyrim mission where you get drunk and you wake up in Markarth and you can't remember what happened and you have to retrace your steps and I can remember like every step of that like realizing that you proposed to a Hagraven and all that stuff 
because that was just like so different and so refreshing and like so memorable compared to everything you do you know and also sometimes you kind of lose track of what was a side mission what was a main mission and it gets a little bit whereas that i know i remember exactly how it happened like ha- exactly how it ended the the amazing stuff that i got from doing that mission so yeah in skyrim i absolutely love the thieves guild quest line because mm. i really love being stealthy and um, lock picking and, and all of that jazz in the world of Skyrim. And I vividly remember one of the quests, which I think is called Blind Sighted, which is kind of like, I think it's maybe the penultimate Thieves Guild quest right before you, spoilers, take over the Thieves Guild, if you mm-hmm. get through to the, the end of it, where you're chasing after um, the guy whose name I've completely forgotten, uh, but the guy that's betrayed you in the Thieves Guild. Yeah, you go through this kind of like dungeon area and at the end it's just this huge Falma statue with big crystal gem eyes that you can take out of the statue, but you have to... F- Mercer Frey! His name is Mercer Frey. Um, <laughs> you, have to, you have to fight Mercer and then you can take the eyes but then the, the dungeon area kind of fills up with water so you have to try and find your way out and it, it's just such a memorable, crazy quest line so much more memorable than any of the main quest lines because i think for a long time when i first played skyrim i didn't even know what the main quest line was i figured (laughs) that there's that like conflict with two armies and i thought that was the main quest line for the longest time Mm -hmm. and i was wasn't bothered by that so it just took such a long time for me to do all of the dragonborn stuff yeah um and yeah i think the Thieves Guild is just such a cool quest line. There's so many cool characters in that guild as well. You get to know and you can kind of rob a house and set things on fire and steal. It's just great. It's so much fun. Mm. I love Alduin, but I do much prefer the side missions. And I guess they know, they, they must know that when you make an open world game, you must have this idea in your head that the side missions need to be as good, if not better than the main campaign. Otherwise, People are just going to play the main campaign, turn the game off, and, and not, never not think exploring. about it. Yeah. Mm. Talking about games that are like known for having great side missions, obviously, in this conversation, I'm going to have to bring up The Witcher Three because it's just inevitable. Like their, their side missions have literally like won awards; they're that good. But I didn't want to go for like I think Bloody Baron is like a universal. Mm. Mm. It's universally known as being a great one. And it is, but there's a couple that I really love, partly because I really like it in side missions where there are choices and and the mission can go different ways, but you can also choose to take like a pacifist route. You don't have to fight anyone if you take it a certain way. So there's one mission called A Tower Full of Mice, which is a Kira Metz. I'm not a big fan of Kira Metz, but it's one of the missions that she asks you to help her out with. And she gives you this lantern, and you need to go to Fi Kyle, and you need to find out what happened there. Oh yeah, that was that was excellent. And it's really hard as well. I don't know if I'm just saying that because the most recent time I played it was on was on Death March, but really bloody hard to get up to the tower in the first place and fight everything off. But you're using this lantern to like illuminate areas, and you're seeing ghosts basically reenact what happened before, and you can tell that something went wrong in this. Uh, tower and when you go up there you meet um i guess she's a ghost um Mm. called annabelle and she says that she died and she says she explains that she died because people were coming to kill her anyway i think and so she took this potion that was supposed to kill her but actually paralyzed her and the rats in the tower she woke up paralyzed and they ate her alive which is obviously horrible but Mm. she asks that you take her body i think it's take her body to her i think were they engaged or they were just in love but the guy that she loved and to explain what happened and you can like not help her or you can help her and and it can lead to you having to fight her or it leads to you going to him and and she killed but it's just so interesting that that such a small mission can change things in the future and you can just take completely different routes with it it's the same for there's a mission which Maybe, maybe I prefer this one, I'm not sure. But there's a mission where you just pick it off of a notice board. It's one of the like contracts that you can pick up. And you're helping this guy called Neelan, I think you say his name. And he his wife's gone missing. And you go to try and find her. And then 
her sister comes out and says, I'll give you money if you just let this go. If you just, I don't want, I don't want him to know what happened to her, his wife. It's better off this way. And obviously you can take it and you can leave. And I don't think that ever gets resolved. But if you don't take it, you find out that he's a werewolf that the sister was in love with him and wanted to show her sister that he was a werewolf and that he killed her. And, and then again, there's another decision where you can choose whether to let him kill the sister after he finds out what happened or not. And that changes things too. And I just find those so interesting because they have that like witcher-esque things are never quite what they seem and, and it starts out one way and it ends another. And I love that. And they're so condensed. It almost feels like, like the first two witcher books, which are the books of short stories. It feels like just you've lifted one of those straight out of the book and I, I just love them so much and I just think they're great. Bloody Baron's great too, but those are two of my favourites and I always look forward to it when I know I'm playing it again and I know I'm about to get to those bits. I just actively look forward to just experiencing them again. I, I think that's why The Witcher is so fantastic is that it's just all shades of grey. Nothing is like mm. ever right or wrong really. It's just kind of, you make... A decision and it has an effect and a consequence but it's not always clear if it's good or bad mm. um and yeah sometimes you have to make snap decisions and do things that you don't think are right at all and they actually end up being quite beneficial so it's a really interesting world yeah yeah the only thing i'd add to that which is follows on quite nicely is it, it's that mixture of exactly what you just said and the fact that each of these are just exceptionally great self-contained stories they're just great yeah. stories just from being beginning, beginning to end um like i think there was it uh just to throw mine into the mix uh, there's one quite early on in white orchard where you have to look for a brother who was in the recent battle and then you find him hanging out with uh an enemy soldier and they've taken refuge in a hut yes yeah, yeah. oh um, yeah yeah and it's and and then you can go and obviously I went for the good one and so there you keep him alive and he gets renamed and they adopt him into the family basically and you come back later and then they're, they're all farming together um mm. and it's just like the, every single one of them oh, every single one of them but all of these ones we've talked about has like an actual end it's not just here's a side quest you went and did a thing here's your payment blah blah That's yeah it. it's it's actually like and you can come and see the results of your actions and the story has a nice uh sense of closure as well i think just, that, that was that's what I was just going to add to The Witcher 3. Mm. I love those ones where you come back later and someone's like, remember me? You helped me all those weeks ago. And now, you know, here's something free from my shop, that kind of thing. It's really mm -hmm. nice to see it just last longer than, you know, the 10 minutes that you were pursuing it. Exactly, the Witcher's yeah. really good for that. I'm predictably going to talk about Mass Effect because mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> there are, well, there are two missions that just stay with me forever um and one of them is in mass effect 2 it's um the shadow broker side quest where you go with liara to try and confront the shadow broker and it's basically an information broker in the, the galaxy who's kind of anonymous no one knows what kind of creature alien person it is um we just know that they have information and network pools all over the galaxy, all over the universe. Um, and so you go with Liara to face the Shadow Broker. And it's just, it's, it's just hilarious. It's full of humor and bonding moments with Liara. And mm. it's just fantastic from start to finish. It's so much fun. And then the other, the other one is Mass Effect 3. It's basically the Citadel DLC, which is basically the send off for Mass Effect 3, where you are, it's, I just get so choked up talking about it because it's, honestly, it's, I become so attached to the characters that it's really hard to kind of say goodbye to them, but that DLC mm. felt like it was saying goodbye. Um, you get given an apartment uh, on the Citadel from your boss, uh, Anderson, and, you get to invite every single crew member that either lived through the suicide mission with you or was in the first game and is now with you in the third game. You can invite everyone over for a party to just kind of have a nice send off. Yeah. And you also get to have little side moments with each and every character. You can go to an arcade with people, you can go dancing and like, uh, you also end up getting, going out for a meal and ending it up being attacked and th and then mm. you meet your own clone which is a, a twist but it's just so funny 
It's got so many inside jokes. It's very self-aware. It like makes fun of itself. Um, and yeah, I just, I love it so much. Mm. And I'm currently holding up a little shepherd to my camera because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love shepherd. Anyway, that's, that's me. I feel like there's no one, one size fits all for side missions, but definitely ones that provide you with something that the main quest might not have been giving you, whether that's like a chance to put just put your gun down for a little bit or to find out more about the people in the world. I'm really looking sure. forward to I've got Ghost of Shushima Shush downloading right yeah. now and I'm really hoping that it's got some I mean we'll, we maybe we can check back in a little while and see because I feel like Valhalla is going to be another one that's going to provide yep. us with a lot of of new, yeah. of new stories. May, maybe cyberpunk as well, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, yeah. gosh. A lot, of, <laughs> okay. a lot of side quests, I imagine. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do this again. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to Games Radar because there's definitely going to be a part two of this because in the next year, there's going to be so many more games that are going to provide us with hopefully some, some Witcher, Oblivion, Skyrim, Dragon Age level side quests. But in the meantime, let us know in the comments what your favourite side missions are and if you liked any of the ones that we suggested. And thanks for watching. And thanks for being in this, guys. Oh, oh thanks for having me. <laughs> you seem surprised by the thanks. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I expected to get no recognition for this. <laughs> no, it's good fun. Nice one. Yeah, it's always great. Yay. <laughs>